the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. My name is Hugh. I am a heterosexual cisgendered male who uses the pronouns he and him. And you, whoever you are, whatever your sexual orientation, gender identity, whatever your pronouns, you are welcome here on this day. We celebrate pride. We celebrate the diversity in and of God's creation. We join together in the call to worship. Good morning and happy pride. We, Sue Senior and Don Charlton, identify as lesbian, cisgender, and are a married couple. Our preferred pronouns are she, her, and hers. Please join us in the responsive call to worship. We come together in a rainbow of hope and love. We come today representing the spectrum of creation. Embodied in us, your spirit is revealed in all its forms. Blessed are we, blessed is our love. May we delight in the ways you have created us. Diverse, unique, surprising, beautiful, and beloved. Thanks be to God. Includes everyone. God's love includes everyone. God's love includes everyone. God's love includes everyone. 
God's love includes everyone. God's love includes everyone. God's love includes everyone. God's love includes everyone. God's love includes everyone. God's love includes everyone. God's love includes everyone. As an inclusive, affirming congregation, we honor the diversity of God's creation. Our community is richer when we include people of all ages, gender identities, racial and cultural backgrounds, sexual orientations, abilities, economic circumstances, and family configurations. We seek to provide a safe place so that each person can bring every aspect of their whole self into participation within this congregation. We invite all to join in the life, leadership, witness, and ministry of Knox Waterloo. Our prayer has already begun. I'd like to continue our prayer using some words. We continue our prayer together. Loving God, when you called each of us into being, you delighted in your good works, for we are wonderfully made. You gifted us with differences that illuminate the breadth of beauty, wisdom, and practices of love in your creation. In whatever ways, we still struggle to accept and celebrate our own unique offerings Free us from narrow thinking that confines, constrains, or condemns your good work in us. As we remember the stories of the love of Jesus reaching across human-made boundaries, nurturing relationships, transcending differences between us, we cannot help but remember that God's love includes us all of us and that this same Jesus calls us to embody this sacred love in the ways we share love with one another and together we sing the the words of the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples good news, the promise that God is not finished with us yet, but the Spirit of God continues to work in us and through us, transforming us into something new. But that's not just something that happens to us as individuals, that's something which is a reality for us as the body of Christ, as the church. God is still working on the church, and we are grateful that God is not finished with the church yet, that we continue to be transformed into something new, something more Christ-like. Thanks be to God for this gift. And the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. The peace of the earth be with you. The peace of the heavens too. The peace of the rivers be with you. The peace of the oceans too.
My name is Grace and I'm a queer member of Knox Waterloo. My pronouns are she, her. Queer is an encompassing identity along the sexuality spectrum, often used as an umbrella term for those who are not heterosexual. Thank you for the opportunity to share my experience here today. It's essential that we listen twice as much as we speak, particularly when hearing from marginalized communities. Thus, I want to assure other members of the LGBTQ plus community that I will listen to truly hear their experiences as well. My experience is simply one in a sea of wonderful folks made in God's image. In pondering the question, what does the church need to hear as we move forward as an affirming space, I repeatedly come back to thinking about the vastness of the needed message. It's different for each member based on experience, identity, and journey. The church is made up of its people and I can only speak as one of so many LGBTQ plus folks. The church is a home and a refuge for many, and that feeling of home extends beyond any building. A sense of home comes from the people that make up the church body. As a queer Christian, I searched for years for a Christian space that felt like home. Knox became a home for me as a space full of those who strive to live according to the example of Jesus Christ, lifting up the voices of the marginalized. When thinking of home, one conjures thoughts of safety, empathy, warmth, and a place to spread their wings. In order to create a welcoming home for our LGBTQ plus siblings in Christ, we must make space for them as people made in the image of God. We must recognize each other as whole and valued contributors to our faith communities, celebrating gifts as they are brought forth. Even as those gifts might at first seem unexpected or might ask us to unpack our own discomforts and biases. We must work to see the barriers present in our social and physical spaces and make necessary changes when our marginalized community members bring them to our attention. An affirming faith space is one of rest for the heavy laden. A home where the message of God's love is visible in the actions that we take to support our members. Jesus welcomes us by saying in Matthew 11, verse 28 and 29, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. As allies and members of the church, we must recognize that the LGBTQ plus folks who are part of our communities are often required to prove the legitimacy of their very existence in faith spaces, community spaces, and personal interactions. Take time to consider that many LGBTQ plus folks are in a place of personal healing when they enter a faith space. Often we have been ignored, dismissed, had our faith questioned, and sometimes fully rejected by faith spaces before we found a way to an affirming one. As we come to a church home seeking rest and the message of Jesus' love, it is important for allies and long-term members to be able to sit in their discomfort, unlearn their personal biases, and seek information from the LGBTQ plus sources to welcome those who are healing. A family does not thrive through stagnation. A healthy church body grows and changes seeks God and asks questions regularly. LGBTQ plus folks need healthy church communities where the voice of Christ can be heard through many. As an LGBTQ plus Christian, I have become used to half-hearted allies. The reason I say half-hearted is because half the person's heart is given to recognizing and dismantling injustices and the other half has trouble knowing where to begin. 
Jesus Christ devoted his life to listening to the needs of the oppressed and bringing them salvation. Many folks have trouble sitting with the discomfort that comes from recognizing their privilege as heterosexual community members. Too often, folks do not choose to stand up for the oppressed because they feel they do not know how, or they don't know someone personally who's LGBTQ+, or they feel their voice isn't strong enough. Change comes through many imperfect voices being raised in unison. Our LGBTQ plus members need to hear yours. We need to hear and see that our Christian siblings will speak against homophobia, even in the small and daily interactions of our lives. The work will not be done by someone else. We are the work. In order to welcome all into the family and home that is the church, LGBTQ plus members must hear the voices of our allies raised in unison with our own. When and where this happens, a more equitable, thriving church centered on the example of Jesus Christ will emerge. Good morning, my name is Courtney Crawford and I identify as a heterosexual cisgender and my pronouns are she and her. This past week I was having a conversation with one of my dear friends and colleagues and we were talking about the term ally. She mentioned that someone recently introduced her to the term in turn, in relation to allyship. We talked about how we both felt that it was a fitting term since we are in the process of unlearning and learning anew. We need to do work in support of inclusion, to do a lot of listening, to lift up the LGBTQ plus community, to be courageous to speak out for justice and to constantly seek to do better. While I strive to be an ally, at this point I would identify myself as an imperfect intern ally with still a lot to learn. Grace lent me this great book to share with you this morning. And it is called Sewing the Rainbow. And it is a story of Gilbert Baker and the rainbow flag. And it is written by Gail E. Pittman and illustrated by Holly Shifton Brown. In a small town in Kansas, where everything was gray and dull and flat, there was a little boy who was full of color and sparkle and glitter, and his name was Gilbert. Gilbert grew up in a time in the 1950s where much of the United States had just returned from being part of World War II. And this was a time where imposed on much of society were heterosexual norms and nuclear families. And they lifted up especially the role of the heterosexual male in a family as leader. And there were very... Um, distinct roles that were given to males and females. And this is the time that Gilbert grew up in. Gilbert loved visiting his grandmother's clothing store. He'd sit next to her while she sewed and drew beautiful gowns and costumes. Gilbert dreamed of someday bringing these drawings to life. But one day, his father took away all of his art supplies and tore up his drawings. 
surrounded by building blocks and erector sets, sports gear and slingshots, Gilbert's colorful, sparkly, glittery personality started to fade, and he too became gray and dull and flat, just like the Kansas landscape. When I grow up, he dreamed, I'll go somewhere that's filled with color. But that didn't happen. Instead, when Gilbert turned 18, he received a letter that knocked every last bit of sparkle out of him. This was a letter calling him in to service. It was, he was drafted to be part of the military and to go off and fight in the war. Gilbert hated his dull, flat uniform that he was given, and he refused to shoot the gun that they gave him. I won't do it, he said. I'm not going to carry a gun. They made him do push-ups. They called him ugly names because he was different, but Gilbert didn't budge. The idea of shooting a gun made him feel sick. So they sent him to San Francisco, where he would never have to pick up a gun again. The day Gilbert arrived in San Francisco, he saw magic. Instead of gray, dull, flat landscape of Kansas, there were rolling green hills, the shimmering blue bay, and a cool white fog wafting over the Golden Gate Bridge. Gilbert was home. Finally, he could breathe. He could be his colorful, sparkly, glittery self. He thought about his grandmother's clothing store. He thought about the drawings his father tore up, and he realized he wanted all of that color back. So Gilbert taught himself to sew, and he created fabulous costumes just like the ones he drew when he was a little boy. Word got around fast in his community. He sewed regalia for Mama Jose and her imperial court. He sewed costumes for famous singers like Sylvester. He sewed banners for protests, marches, and rallies. Gilbert's creations were everywhere. He was making the city more and more colorful by the day. There was just one thing that continued to blemish their city. It was a symbol that in Gilbert's community was a constant reminder of evil. And this was a symbol that they used for the LGBTQ plus community that was given to them in World War II by the Nazis who did not agree with the heterosexual lifestyle. So they wanted to get rid of this symbol. We need a new logo, his friend Harvey Milk said to him one day, and Gilbert got an idea. He bought huge bolts of cotton fabric, buckets of dye, and a lot of thread. Then he gathered up all his friends and got to work. They cut the fabric into long strips, dyed them in big trash cans, then headed to the local laundromat to rinse and dry the strips. They ironed the creases so the fabric was nice and smooth. Then Gilbert began to sew. They worked until dawn. By the time the sun rose, Gilbert and his friends had created two beautiful rainbow flags, but their work wasn't over. A flag belongs in the wind, Gilbert says. 
The big day arrived. A crowd gathered around City Hall. Gilbert held his breath. Would people understand his flags? Up they went. The flags unfurled, flooding the sky with a spectrum of colors. The city radiated with color and sparkle and glitter. And the crowd lit up like gold at the end of the rainbow. Today, the rainbow flag is everywhere. Even in the small town in Kansas where Gilbert grew up. Whenever you see a rainbow flag, you'll know that it's okay to be your colorful, sparkly, glittery self. So we can thank Gilbert Baker for our pride flags that we have around our church and in the sanctuary and our God's love includes everyone signs. And we want Knox Waterloo to be a place where everyone can be themselves, their colorful, sparkly selves.
Psalm 139 is one of my favorite pieces of scripture in the Bible. This psalm speaks of a God that has called us into being. Each one of us, unique, important, loved, and graced. There is something so powerful and comforting in the knowledge that God knows us completely. Every part of us, who we really are, and loves us entirely. There is no place that we can escape from God's loving presence. God formed our inward parts and knit us together. Each and every part of us is fearfully and wonderfully made. One of the first books that we read to both of our children on the week that they were born is called On the Night You Were Born, and it is based on Psalm 139. Inscribed in the book is verse 14, and every night that I read it to our children and talked about that wonderful night that they were born, I always ended by saying, either Nathan or Hannah, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are loved. We all needed to be reminded of this every day. Let us listen to these words of sacred poetry read by Ash. My name is Ash Milne, and I am a non-binary bisexual. My pronouns are they, them. Today I share with you a reading from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in shoal, you are there are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as day for the darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. That I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret. Intricately woven in the depths of the earth, Your eyes beheld my unformed substance, and your books were written. All the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you.
This is the poetry of the people of God. Thanks be to God. What is it that's at the heart of, of Christianity, of the Christian faith? There could be as many responses to that question as there are worshipers today, but I suspect many of you would include in your response something about love. The way that the love of God is revealed in Jesus of Nazareth, and the way that Jesus teaches us, helps us to, to think about how we can transform the world by loving the way that Jesus loves. One day someone asked Jesus a question and said, what's the most important commandment? And I read that as, what's the wisest way to live? And you know the response. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. I think that those two dimensions of love, loving God and loving neighbor, are actually one and the same. Some of us desperately try to preserve religion and we forget to love. Reminds me of something I read about from, um, in a book from Barbara Brown Taylor recently, and she said this, when my religion tries to come between me and my neighbor, I will choose my neighbor. A reading from 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. This is the witness of the early church. Thanks be to God. Our next speaker is Sean Jackson. Uh, Sean asked today uh, to be identified as a gay cisgendered male who uses the pronouns he and him. So um, when Hugh asked if I would uh, speak, um, he kind of said, you know, what is the, what, what do you, you know, the theme is what, what, do you, what do you think the church needs to hear? And uh, the two of us kind of had a little discussion about um, the fact that I, I don't think the church at this point needs to hear anything. I think the church has heard everything that the church needs to hear. It's been decades of trying to make a decision about, you know, whether we should, uh, you know, ordain LGBTQ plus people for, for ministry positions or positions of leadership. It's been decades you know, that we're trying to make the decision, do, do we allow gay and lesbian people to get married? You know, and, and there's been reports and there's been studies and there's been, of course, you know, storytellers of harm done. And that was what the rainbow communion is all about. The church, the church has heard everything the church needs to hear. So I think a better question is what do LGBTQ Presbyterians need to hear at this point? And I think truly, um, you know, there's kind of two, there's kind of two things um, that, that I think, that I think, uh, you know, that I would want to hear and that I need to hear. And I found actually two memes that I think are quite funny um, that hopefully other people will think are funny too. And I'm going to kind of share them with you. Um, and so the first one kind of relates to, uh, the fact that, um, a gay Christian is not an oxymoron. A hateful Christian most certainly is. Um, and I think this really speaks very true, but the point I wanted to make to LGBTQ Presbyterians is that, you know, after, you know, general assembly and, you know, we've passed the remits you're seen now. Um, we, we do exist. Um, and, and I think that standing in, um, the, in a space where you can be seen, it gives you identity. And I think we have identity now. Um, there's still a lot of hate. There's still a lot of hate. 
But what happened at General Assembly that we as LGBTQ Presbyterians can hold up is that progress has been made. We have so much work yet to do because when we saw the way that the votes came down and when we saw the way that, you know, there's a full third of the church that is not for inclusion. It's the same as that, you know, um, Canadian Parliament voted this past week, 263 to 63 to make the process of gay conversion therapy illegal. And at this point, I think, you know, we can all kind of look to two ways, whether it's a Presbyterian church or whether it's Canada, you can look at the progress that we've made and say, yeah, we've still got a lot of work to do, but we've made progress. Um, or you can kind of dwell on the fact that there's still a third of the Presbyterian church or the third of the people that voted that would have us not be allowed to get married, that don't want a dual definition of, of marriage, that don't think that LGBTQ plus people should be ordained. But I'm choosing now to focus on the progress. That's what I'm choosing to focus on. And um, so I think that was the first thing is that we, we have been seen and our allies have stood behind us. And that's a really, really, that's something that we can take stock in. That's something that's really, really amazing. There's tons of people at General Assembly, if you watched any of it, that kind of were, were allies and that were supporting and they were supporting very, very, very enthusiastically. And it was very empowering. It was very, very empowering. The second thing that I think LGBTQ plus people need to know is that you're loved. At least that's what I would want to know. And that's the way I feel. So when the inclusion committee met a couple of weeks ago and we talked about General Assembly and a few people, you know, spoke. There was lots of very animated discussion. You know, I felt very, very acknowledged and very loved. And, and I do feel that way by my family and by, by people at Knox. And certainly by our ministers. Right? And that's something that I can say to, you know, to LGBTQ people. You are, you are loved. There are people out there that support you. The other, the other thing, you know, that goes along with you are loved is that you're, you're not just loved by people in, in the congregation. You're loved by God. And this, I thought, was a funny, funny meme. You know, here's Jesus, and he says, love everyone no matter what, which is really the tenet of what Jesus told us to do. Like, love each other. And here you get this guy saying, well, what if they're gay? And Jesus says, yes, even if they ask silly questions. And I know that this is a little tongue in cheek, um, but it is true. You know, God is all about love. And, you know, you are loved by the people in the church and, and you're loved by God. And that was one of the realizations that I had when I was a little kid. You know, I, like when I was coming to terms with being gay and I was trying to come out of the closet. That was one of the things that I had to come to terms with was, you know, I felt like I was, you know, doing so wrong. And I prayed every single night. I prayed every night for God to take this away from me. And God didn't take it away. And it hit me one day at church. I was talking to someone else and it hit me at church. And I was telling her, I said, you know, so I was telling a friend who was going through a really tough time. And she said, God doesn't answer my prayers. I kind of said, I think God does answer prayers, but I think maybe we don't always pay attention to what he's telling us. And uh, then it kind of hit me. Oh, you're an idiot. You've been praying all these years for God to take this away from you. And he's telling you, no, I'm not going to, because I love you and I made you to be this way. And I think now we can kind of boldly go in that, in that confidence that we are loved and we are seen. And we can start making a difference in the church, knowing that we have the full support of our allies and we have the full support of fully two thirds of the Presbyterian church in Canada. So progress is being made and let's just keep on marching forward in the way that we know best.
this place. There is welcome in this space. There is welcome with embrace, with open hearts. A place of caring and acceptance. Openness and trust. Actions that are just. All are welcome here. A place of belonging. welcome in this place, there is welcome in this space, and you are welcome here. And uh, we're so glad that, uh, that you could join, join Knox for worship on this day of celebration, this day of, of deep prayer as well. Lots of gratitude today. Thank you so much to, uh, to Grace and to Sean. And in a few minutes, you're going to hear from Kathy for your contributions to worship today, to Ash for reading scripture, to the members of the Inclusion Initiatives team who, who helped organize this service and who have participated in the coming together of this service. Thank you. As well to Courtney, to MC, uh, and to our faithful crew at the back today, to Kathleen, uh, who uses the pronoun she, her, uh, to Stephen, who uses the pronouns he, him, and to Jamie, who also uses the pronouns he, him. Thank you for, uh, for your faithful work. One announcement uh, today, uh, that is that uh, for, in preparation for service last Sunday, many of you painted rocks orange as a, as a, as a symbol of solidarity uh, with uh, our indigenous siblings. Last week it was we use the rocks uh, as part of our National Indigenous People Sunday um, as we mourn the discovery of, of the graves of uh, children at residential schools. This past week we heard about more. We will hear more down the road as well, sadly, and not surprisingly. Uh, we took those orange stones and made a little memorial just outside uh, the church on on the west side in the garden, and you can see it as you're driving by or walking by. We invite you, the next time you do drive or walk by, to pause and to offer a prayer, whatever prayer is in your heart. 
it's, this is a day of so many gifts. We, we celebrate the gifts that people bring to, to God. And uh, some of those gifts are, are financial gifts. And we are so grateful to you for your continued faithful support for the ministries of Christ in and through Knox Waterloo. Uh, we encourage you to continue to, to give faithfully so that celebrations like this can continue to transform uh, not only our church community, but this neighborhood, Waterloo, and the world indeed. Let's take a few moments and reflect on, on our giving and actually give. Kiggins, and my pronouns are she and her. I'm a cisgender, heterosexual person of white privilege. 
I'm a lifelong Presbyterian, and I've been attending Knox Waterloo for about six years. My ancestors were settlers on the traditional lands of the Fort William First Nation, located in the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg, which includes the Ojibwe, Ottawa, and Potawatomi Nations. Today I give thanks for the ability to speak at Knox Waterloo, which is located on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and neutral peoples. I call myself an ally. Had you asked me a few years ago, I would probably have said that I was doing a pretty good job of being an ally. I might have even said that I was proud of the job that I was doing. I'd voice concerns in my former church when a guest minister spoke out against same-sex marriage. I made sure that I was friendly and welcoming to any person I met who was LGBTQI2S+. I marched with other Presbyterians in Toronto Pride Parades. My daughter is married to her same-sex partner, and I celebrated their relationship, subsequent marriage, and more recently the arrival of their children. However, in my time at Knox, and because of connections that I have made here and beyond, I've realized that in spite of good intentions, I will never be able to do enough. I've learned so much, but there's always more to learn. One of the most important things I've learned is to listen and pay attention to what is needed instead of just reacting and doing what I think is needed. I've also learned the importance of using correct pronouns for others and for myself. This action helps show awareness and acceptance. It's very easy to underestimate the significance of symbols. One of the presenters at a workshop that I attended mentioned a church where she felt welcomed and affirmed because on some of the name tags at that church, people had a small sticker with a rainbow and a cross. That presenter was talking about Knox. The sticker was given to people at the completion of a diversity training workshop that was held here. Those who completed the training received the stickers with instructions to only use them if they would feel comfortable being approached from someone from the community. I have a rainbow ally button that I wear from time to time, especially during Pride Month. At times I questioned the act of wearing it. Was I doing it for the wrong reasons? Here, look at me. I'm special. I'm inclusive. But then a couple of years ago, I received a handwritten note from a beautiful young person who worked at one of our favorite coffee shops, thanking me for wearing the button and letting me know that it made a difference to them. It helped to know that there were acquaintances who didn't know their story, but would accept them just for who they were without question or judgment. I'm privileged to have family members and friends who have allowed me to walk beside them in their journeys. I truly believe the words in the Knox inclusion statement. Our community is richer when we include people of all ages, gender identities, racial and cultural backgrounds, sexual orientations, abilities, economic circumstances, and family configurations. The statement is not saying that they are richer because we include them. It says we are richer because of inclusion. 
In my quest to be an ally, I've made many mistakes, and I am sure I will make many more. When that happens, I hope that someone will correct me so that I can apologize sincerely and learn from my mistakes. Learn to work harder at using correct pronouns, to ask only appropriate questions, and to truly accept and affirm. I want to end with a quote from Amy Hayes that was posted in the Reanimate group of the Presbyterian Church. The work of allyship is love in action without need for recognition. Allies should need no recognition. Knox has come a long way in its journey towards inclusion, but like me, it still has a long way to go. I pray for the day when we can be totally truthful when we say, God's love includes everyone with no exceptions. Our closing prayer for today will include a, a, a ritual of, of candle lighting. We will light the, the candles which are, are before us as the colors of the rainbow. When the words appear on your screen, feel free to join in the spoken parts of this prayer. For our storm-tossed world, the rainbow is a sign of hope. For communities, that embrace and affirm the spectrum of sexual orientation and gender identity, the rainbow is a sign of welcome, pride, and justice. For many persons of faith, the rainbow is also a powerful sign of their enduring relationship between the holy and human kind. We remember that according to the book of Genesis, God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I made between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. In, in God's, God's sight, sight all, all humankind, humankind is a rainbow people. people. Many, Many and splendid are we in, in color and culture, culture sexuality and gender, gender Ability, ability and language, language shining, shining together beneath, beneath the arching, arching colors, colors of, of divine, divine love. love. Red, the color of strawberry and rose petal, passion and birth. Sweet and vivacious, the color of life. God of life, we thank you for the breaths we take, for urban energies and rural rhythms, for day's demands and God's repose, and for your care and surrounding all. Especially this day, we thank you for the blessings and challenges of right relationship, for love configured in myriad ways with friends and families, sweethearts and partners, co-workers, neighbors, and even enemies. Guide, Guide us through love's complexities. complexities. Empower, Empower us, us to shape a world where love may flourish, a world without, without poverty, poverty, violence, and, and discrimination. discrimination. Orange, the color of pumpkin and flame, warmth and compassion. Bright and enlivening, color of healing, orange. God of healing, we trust you are at work in our bodies and families, neighborhoods and countries to bring health and restoration. Uphold, Uphold all, all who live with, with hunger, hunger, loneliness, loneliness illness and, and grief all who live in the midst of danger or in exile, all who wonder how they will manage another day, 
Uphold us as we offer comfort and advocate for change. Uproot our indifference and plant in us the strength to be aware, compassionate, and just. Yellow, the color of lemon and sun, joy and enthusiasm. Radiant and bold, the color of hope. God of hope, we bless you for creations unfolding, for mysteries around us and potential within us, for goodness called forth as we live with faith, forgiveness, and generosity. Nurture, Nurture the, the graces, graces in, in us that, that we, we may, may be channels, channels of, of your transforming, transforming power. power. Green, the color of inchworms and pine, calm and growth. Restful and abundant, the color of nature, green. God of the universe, we rejoice in the splendors and sustenance of our planet, its woods and waters, deserts and fields, peaks and valleys, and in all, seen and unseen, that lives upon it. Give, Give us wisdom to act with care and respect for this, our earthly home. Blue, the color of sky and mountain ridge, depth and inspiration. Soaring and fluent, the color of harmony. God of harmony, we know that you intend our differences to enrich and not divide us. Help, Help us to listen and to learn from one another. Move us to bring down barriers of prejudice and raise up bridges of understanding. Set our hearts upon shalom and give us courage in the struggles for justice and peace. Purple the color of grapes and lilacs, strength and dignity. Profound and majestic, the color of spirit, purple. God, eternal spirit, we praise you. Thanks be to you for all who have come before us, blazing paths of equality and community. Thanks be to you for those today who in word and action respond to your call to love kindness, to do justice, and to live humbly with you. God, God eternal, eternal Spirit, Spirit we, we praise, praise you. With, with your, your rainbow spread, spread over us, Send us forth to be your spirited people. May your love shine through us now and always. Amen. Let us join together in our final hymn. Oh. 
a place at the table, a voice to be heard, a part in the song, the hands of a child in hands that are wrinkled, for young and for old, the right to belong, and God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy. Like a rock, God is under our feet. Like a roof, God is over our heads. Like the horizon, God is beyond us. Like water in a pitcher, God is in us and in the pouring out of us. Like a pebble in the sea, we are in God. As God has changed your life this day, go now to change the world. Amen. I'm Hugh Donnelly, one of the ministers at Knox Waterloo. 
Thank you for being a part of the worshiping community today. You can find us online at knoxwaterloo.ca, and you are always welcome to call us at 519-886-4150. This broadcast is made possible by you, listeners and friends of Knox, who support Knox's broadcast ministry. Please consider making a donation in gratitude as you are able, and may the peace of Christ be with you.